Hello students, today we can see the topic the C3 pathway which is also said to be as the biosynthetic phase or Calvin cycle or dark reaction. During the light reaction, the products like ATP, NADPH and oxygen are produced. Oxygen being a gas diffuses out of the chloroplast and is released into the atmosphere through the stomata. ATP and NADPH are used in the biosynthetic phase of photosynthesis. Why it is said to be as the biosynthetic phase? Because during this phase, synthesis of food or the biomolecule or organic molecule occurs. That's why it is said to be as the biosynthetic phase of photosynthesis. This biosynthetic phase does not directly depend on the presence of light. But it is depending on the products of light reaction that is ATP and NADPH. Okay. So by utilizing ATP and NADPH during biosynthetic phase, carbon dioxide will be reduced to carbohydrate okay this phase is also said to be as dark reaction why it is said to be as dark reaction because this reaction does not directly depend on the presence of light okay but that doesn't mean it takes place in the dark so we can say this dark reaction is a misnomer misnomer means what it is misnamed wrongly named isn't it because this reaction does not take place in the dark only even in light it can take place okay so immediately after light is unavailable the biosynthetic process will be continued for some time then it stops why it stops when there is no more atp and nadph for continuing this reaction then the reaction will stop okay then when light is made available ATP and NADPH will be synthesized and when once ATP and NADPH is synthesized again this dark reaction will be continued okay this ATP and NADPH which are produced during the light reaction is used along with the water to reduce this carbon dioxide to carbohydrate or a sugar okay so sugar or any carbohydrate can be synthesized during the biosynthetic phase using the products of light reaction like atp and nadph okay it was of interest to scientists to find out how the dark reaction proceeded and what was the first product formed when carbon dioxide was fixed it was melvin calvin an American scientist who worked out the path of carbon by using paper chromatography technique. For his exemplary work, he was awarded with Nobel Prize in 1961. He used radioactive carbon that is C14 in alkyl photosynthesis studies and the algae which he used was chlorella. His studies led to the discovery that the first carbon dioxide fixation product was a 3-carbon organic acid called 3-phosphoglyceric acid. He also worked out the complete biosynthetic pathway and hence the biosynthetic pathway is also called as Calvin cycle. The first product formed was 3-phosphoglyceric acid, a 3-carbon organic acid and this pathway is also said to be as a C3 pathway. Okay, And this is the apparatus which was used by Calvin for his experiment. He took chlorella in chlorella cells inside this apparatus okay a suspension of chlorella cells were used and he injected carbon dioxide which was having radioactive carbon into the apparatus and the chlorella cells were illuminated so within seconds what happens the photosynthesis begins so within seconds after the beginning of photosynthesis he took some suspensions of this chlorella cells and dropped it in hot methanol to kill it and he took chlorella cells at different intervals and dropped in hot methanol killed it and then he uh, found out the radioactive substance in algae and it was separated by two-dimensional paper chromatography.
okay the radioactive sub uh, substances in algae were separated by two dimensional paper chromatography and the radioactive carbon was located by auto radiography and thus he found the first product was a 3 phosphoglyceric acid okay so this was the experiment which was conducted by melvin calvin and based on his experiment he found that the first product was 3 phosphoglyceric acid and he was able to work out the whole biosynthetic pathway okay plants in which the first product of carbon dioxide fixation is a C3 acid are called C3 plants. Which is the C3 acid produced? It is 3-phosphoglyceric acid. And the pathway followed by them are, is called as a C3 pathway. And the scientists were trying to know whether all plants will be producing 3-phosphoglyceric acid as the first product of carbon dioxide fixation or whether any other product is formed in any other plants. They conducted various experiments over a wide range of plants and they found that in some of the plants, first stable product which was formed of carbon dioxide fixation was an organic acid which was having 4 carbon in it. And this 4 carbon organic acid was identified as oxaloacetic acid. So the plants in which the first product of carbon dioxide fixation is a C4 acid are called as C4 plants. The C4 acid is oxaloacetic acid and the pathway followed is said to be as C4 pathway. Next is the, to find out which is the primary acceptor of carbon dioxide. So it took a very long time for the scientists to find out which is the primary acceptor of carbon dioxide. They did many experiments and trying to find a two carbon compound because they believed that since the first product was a C3 acid, the first a primary acceptor of carbon dioxide would be a two carbon compound, isn't it? Anyone can think like that because carbon dioxide is having one carbon carbon and there should be another two carbon compound when they combine together they can form a c3 acid isn't it so they were thinking like that and they were doing many experiments to find out that two carbon compound okay so it took several years and at last they were not able to identify any two carbon compound but they found out a five carbon keto sugar called ribulose bisphosphate or ribulose 1 5 bisphosphate and this was the primary acceptor of carbon dioxide. So this RUBP, in short we can say it as RUBP, this ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate was the primary acceptor of carbon dioxide which accepted carbon dioxide and uh, uh, the initial product called the 3-phosphoglyceric acid was formed. Okay. Now we can see about the Calvin cycle or the biosynthetic pathway. Calvin and his co-workers found that this pathway occurs in a cyclic manner because the RUBP which is the primary acceptor of carbon dioxide will be produced or will be regenerated again at the last so that it can be again available to accept another molecule of carbon dioxide. That's why they considered this as a cycle and so it is named as the Calvin cycle. Okay. Now, this Calvin cycle can be seen occurring in all the photosynthetic plants. It does not matter that whether it is a C3 plant or a C4 plant or any other plant which is following any other pathway. In all the plants, the C3 pathway occurs. Okay, And this Calvin cycle occurs in three stages. What are the three stages? Carboxylation, reduction and regeneration. Or we can say the three steps by which the Calvin cycle occurs is carboxylation carboxylation reduction and a regeneration so first step is carboxylation what is carboxylation it is a chemical reaction in which carboxylic acid group is produced when a substrate reacts with the carbon dioxide isn't it the same thing occurs here also so carboxylation here means carboxylation is the fixation of carbon dioxide into a stable organic intermediate Okay, so carbon dioxide is utilized for the carboxylation of RUBP into a stable intermediate organic molecule. Okay, 
and this reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme RUBP carboxylase. As a result, what is formed? Two molecules of 3-phosphoglyceric acid is formed. So, when carbon dioxide is utilized for the carboxylation of RUBP, catalyzed by the enzyme RUBP carboxylase, two molecules of 3-phosphoglyceric acid is formed. The enzyme is what? RUBP carboxylase, isn't it? This enzyme can also help in oxygenation also. Actually, we are saying it as RUBP carboxylase. That means it helps in carboxylation, but it can also help in oxygenation. Okay, so we can better say this enzyme as RUBP carboxylase oxygenase or in short, Rubisco. Okay, so the RUBP carboxylase can be better said to be as RUBP carboxylase oxygenase or in short form, Rubisco because it is having the property of acting as carboxylase enzyme as well as oxygenase enzyme. Okay. Now, the next step is reduction. Reduction is a series of reactions that lead to the formation of glucose. The steps involve utilization of two molecules of ATP for phosphorylation and two molecules of NADPH for reduction per carbon dioxide molecule fixed. For the formation of one molecule of glucose, six molecules of carbon dioxide should be fixed and this cycle should take place six times. Six turns of the cycle is required for the formation of one molecule of glucose. Okay. Now, when we see in detail this reduction, it is a series of steps, isn't it? A series of reaction occurs in this. We can see how this phosphoglyceric acid is converted into glucose. Actually, it occurs by the reverse of glycolysis. What is glycolysis? It is a, a reaction or it is a series of steps which occurs during uh, respiration that we will be seeing it in the next chapter okay so the reverse of glycolysis occurs in reduction step so first the phosphoglyceric acid will be phosphorylated with the atp to form 13 diphosphoglyceric acid okay phosphoglyceric acid is phosphorylated by atp to form 13 diphosphoglyceric acid this 13 diphosphoglyceric acid forms phosphoglyceraldehyde with the help of nadph and h plus this phosphoglyceraldehyde now it will be converted into dihydroxyacetone phosphate by the enzyme triose phosphate isomerase and this dihydroxyacetone phosphate condenses with the phosphoglyceraldehyde to form fructose 1,6 diphosphate this fructose 1,6 diphosphate will be losing one phosphate group and it forms fructose 6-phosphate by this step called dephosphorylation. And this fructose 6-phosphate will be isomerized to glucose 6-phosphate. And by the removal of 1-phosphate from glucose 6-phosphate, glucose will be formed. Like this, glucose or any other carbohydrate can be synthesized. Okay, so all these series of reactions together form the reduction step. As a result, at last, glucose is formed, and for one glucose molecule to to be formed, six turn of the cycle has to take place. Okay. The last step in the Calvin cycle is regeneration. What is regenerated? RUBP is regenerated. Why it should be regenerated for the cycle to take place uninterruptedly, the RUBP should be regenerated. Okay. Why? Because RUBP is the molecule which fix the carbon dioxide. So, when once RUBP fixes one molecule of carbon dioxide, again it should be regenerated so that it will be available to fix another molecule of carbon dioxide. Okay. So, for the synthesis of RUBP, one ATP is also required. So, for the regeneration of RUBP, one ATP is utilized and RUBP will be regenerated so that it will be available for fixing another molecule of carbon dioxide. Okay. So, in one Calvin cycle, three molecule of ATP and two molecule of NADPH are required, isn't it? So, in order to meet the difference in the number of ATP and NADPH, 
ADPH used in the dark reaction, the cyclic photophosphorylation takes place properly as a data. Now, I told you three molecules of ATP and two molecules of NADPH are used for fixing one molecule of carbon dioxide, isn't it? Two molecules of ATP are used during the reduction step and one molecule of ATP is used in the regeneration of uh, RUBP, isn't it? And two molecules of NADPH are uh, used during the reduction step. So, for the synthesis of one molecule of glucose, we can say 18 molecules of ATP and 12 molecules of NADPH are used. How it is 18 molecules of uh, ATP and 12 molecules of NADPH? Because for one cycle to take place or one carbon dioxide molecule to be fixed, uh, three molecules of ATP is utilized as a data. So, if one molecule of glucose has to be synthesized, the cycle should take place six times. So, six into 3 ATP, we can get 18 ATP, isn't it? That means 18 molecules of ATP are utilized during the formation of one molecule of glucose. Same way, uh, 2 NADPH are utilized for the fixation of one molecule of carbon dioxide, isn't it? So, for the formation of one molecule of glucose, how many times the cycle should take place? 6 times. So, 6 into 2 molecules of NADPH is equal to 12 molecules of NADPH. That means 12 molecules of NADPH is utilized for the formation of one molecule of glucose. Okay. So, for the formation of one molecule of glucose, 18 ATP molecules and 12 NADPH molecules are utilized. Okay. So, this is about the Calvin cycle or biosynthetic phase or dark reaction or C3 pathway. Okay.